at least the second day in a row, I left the track a little heated. Um, one, I hate the mud. Two, I hate when horses make brakes. Three, I hate the mud. I have to go to the race at Sayota Tight. I'm driving out of what is sunny now towards what I know is going to be a, a swamp. Now I get the hiccups. Who even gets the hiccups anymore? I get the hiccups in decades. Oh my god. All those bells you hear are uh, you guys buying the shares of Marching Forth. I suspect he'll be sold out in minutes. Um, I guess we'll talk about him. We'll talk about the races today. And then I'll finish with another horse that a lot of people are asking about in Neptune. So we'll start with marching fourth. Uh, this is Southwind Frank Colt that I watched race last year a couple of times for, for Ron Burke um, in Corbin in Kentucky, I think Lexington maybe. I saw him a number of times and, uh, you know, clearly hit speed. Out of gear would make breaks. Kind of what we're, what we're always on the lookout for, right? And um, when it came to uh, when it came to marching forth, I saw his name pop up and on gate. I waited. Uh, we ended up paying fifteen thousand two hundred. I was actually on the track racing La Dorian. La Dorian. I don't even know how to say her name. I don't think it is Dorian. I think it is La Dorian. Anyway. Uh, I gave my my laptop, my iPad to Chris Lems and said, I think, go to 15 too. And then we had just sold Green Glitter. Somebody came and offered decent money for her. We sold her. I said, you know what? I just sold that Philly. Go to his 16. <laughs> I said 15 too because usually what happens when you're in a sale, whether it's online or otherwise, you'll see um, people have numbers in their head, right? Usually round numbers. 15, 20, 25, 22, something like that. Uh, when there was two minutes left, he was at like 8,000. It's like, this is zero percent chance that he goes, he goes for that. Uh, I come back in, I was coming back in, and Chris Lamb said, We got him, we got him for 15, too, just what he said. Um, so he is, uh, Green Glitter was bought by somebody at the Meadows to race. Um, she's gonna race at the Meadows. So I had um, Doyle Transport just pick up marching forth. I, had, I called, I texted Mark Weaver and said, can we pick that horse up? He said, no problem. Pick him up because we had a ride right to the Meadows Forum already on its way down before we bought him. So uh, marching forth will join Tim at the Meadows uh, late tonight, which is good. Now on to the races today, you know, when it came to Flash Fly, she just qualified. I looked at the program, there were some trotters in there, showed 57, 58. She's not ready to go there yet, maybe not ever. The, you know, the one thing about somebody asked me, like, why do we still have Flash Fly? Well, Flash Fly is a half-sister to Fashion Wood Chopper by Green Shoe. Uh, her brother sold for 610000 when he was a yearly. So there's a lot of good family and good blood in her, uh, in her family sold out soon um, in her family so we'll uh, we should got market 58 now which is obviously nothing exciting uh, but I would like to win a couple of races with her try to maximize her her earnings and her uh, lifetime mark if I could and then we'll sell her as a broodmare later on uh, later on this fall also um, also <laughs> Also, uh, La Dor Dorian uh, race today. You know, it, the funny story is Steve, you know, you guys know Steve Palermo, buddy of mine. Um, this is literally how it happens. Um, uh, Steve Brett, the horse that the horse that beat us, King of Green. Was that his name? King of, I can't remember. Anyway, he uh, he bred that horse, and that was out of a mare that we had, Stacy Hanover. Anyway, uh, the, the two horses on paper were that horse on the rail and us with the nine hole. Now, going into the first turn, Mike was gonna gonna feed me the five hole. I wasn't very hungry. Uh, I wasn't going in the five hole. I just wanted to keep um, La, the, La Dorian. I just wanted to keep her out of trouble, right? Keep her in a comfortable, 
frame of mind. That's what I wanted to do. I, I thought to myself, if I could do that and continue to advance, she tried 57, 58, she might have. I was very pleased with her today. That horse ran me down fair and square, but she did trot her last quarter and went 31, 30 and two, last half of 59, but did it without one instance where I was concerned about her making a break. So it was a good race for her. And that filly is going to trot faster. She's going to do better. She's going to be a nice filly throughout the fall, probably into the winter. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun with her. Now, uh, the last one is a horse. I was just, the whole the whole thing angered me because it poured rain. I hate the mud. I think I said that before. It poured rain. And the weird thing about the meadows is when it rains like that, the water just sits there. It's just like soup. You can't see anything. I raced a, a horse in the 12th. I couldn't see a thing come out with Drebin and we come out in the track uh, he felt good, I scored him down, he seemed good going around the first turn, I can't see a thing, I see a horse bolt to the right on the run I know that Wilbur's getting over in front of me I can barely see him, I'm trying, to, trying to see where I'm going you know, squinting and looking around my glasses I know that Ronnie Wren's going to clear to the front and I'm thinking to myself, well if I can move him to the front, Ronnie will you know, he'll, he'll turn me, but and Ronnie's not stupid. The other favorite just made a break. Mike Wilder's horse just run. Ronnie knows there's only two horses on paper left, him and I. He's not going to give the race away. He's not going to twist his horse over backwards to let me go. If I trot past him, no problem, I'm sure. And almost immediately when I get to the outside, I realize I'm in trouble. I'm literally going to have to push this horse into the turn. Almost done, I think. I'm gonna to have to push this horse into the turn um, to get past Ronnie. As we get to the turn, I'm not getting by Ronnie. He can't turn me now. We're past the point of no return. Even worse than that, now he's starting to run in a little bit and I can hear him pick, pick, pick. He's hitting his knee. He gets hikey, he gets out of gear, rolls off. I'm, you know, disgusted when I pull up, I'm angry. And I'm thinking to myself, why, you know, why would he make a break there? As hobbles, I said to Tim, I said, is this the same bike he'd on? And, you know, the one thing about Tim and Dean is, you know, you go up to the horse and they have a little, a little piece of paper and plastic for every horse. Every horse, this is what they wear, which is the way it's supposed to be. They're pretty meticulous in that regard. So it's not like you're going to say, is this any, oh, I don't know, I can't, you're not going to get that. No, this is where he wears his hobbles. This is where he wears the gate pole. This is the same thing he's wore. I'm like, all right, whatever. He said, you know, he's hiking. He's out of gear. He's hitting himself. He run. It's a track. Yes, I went back and looked. Uh, I went back and watched the race from last week because I'd said to Tim, you know, these hobbles were kind of loose today. And when Mike drove them last week, he was kind of rocking on the bike. They were tight. Are you sure that they're the same hole? He said, yes. Well, the problem is I'm 185 pounds. Mike Wilder uh, weighs about as much as Ava does. Weighs about a, maybe 120, 125 pounds. Uh, picture a hockey stick with a couple of arms and legs coming out of it. And a head propped on top. That would be Mike. It's not much to him. And I really just think that I'm bigger, right? I'm, I'm a good 60 pounds heavier than Mike Wilder. I, I would bet good money on that. Minimum. And yeah, he was rocking. One thing Mike didn't do, he didn't move him going into that turn. He moved him starting into the back stretch, first over. I moved him going into a turn, and here is the biggest kicker of all. If you watch the video, as he's coming out of the last turn, he's got his inside knee boot spun around a little bit. So he's been at it. Now we wear two sets of bell boots on him for weight, because he needed it when he came over. I don't know how his confidence is after today, but going into today it was pretty strong. We're gonna have to maybe tinker with his shoeing get those two sets of bell boots off him if we can. I don't know if we can. See if we can maybe get him off his knees a little bit. He's not pounding them, but he is at them. There's no two ways about that. Drebin's a fast horse, and he's going to be a nice horse. But he'll never excel to what he needs to be if he continues to interfere the way he is. We're not talking about pounding his knees. No, we're, we're talking about a constant line of interference. Flip-flops are tricky. You know, horses that get sore feet, they'll get at their knees hard. He 
he's not hitting hard behind, so I don't know exactly what we can do. I'd rather not change him away from flip flops, but we gotta do something. Or he's gonna get out of that class, and that'll be it for Drebin, because he won't be able to advance interfering the way he is. Fast Colt, nice Colt. Just need to tinker a little bit. Now, the track itself was a problem. The way I drove him was a problem. We can fix one part-time. He'll, he'll have to race in the slop at some point again. But you definitely drive him a little tidier than I did today. I literally couldn't see a thing when I moved him. I just knew there was nobody beside me, and I, I wasn't going to run into anybody when I moved him. So timing, right? We always talk about timing, and uh, this was not the greatest timing. One to move him, because I was about to get parked if he didn't make a break. I still might have been second anyway. I don't think I would have beat him. And two, moving him going into a turn where he's going to run in and get into his knee. You can't put a hole up the inside because he'll get hit his outside knee. So, kind of a game of, not inches, millimeters when it comes to him. So that is what took place today. La Dorian was good. Very happy with her. Happy with her confidence level. Happy with her attitude. Yes, she get picked off, but she'll win that race again. She's going to get better and better and better. Flash Fly, she's not really going to get better and better and better. She's a, a moderately okay horse that's worth infinitely more as a broodmare. We're going to continue to race her probably into November, and then we'll we'll turn her loose as a broodmare prospect. And then when it comes to Drevin, I need to do better. He needs to do better. And uh, if we can both succeed at that, then um, I think you're going to see a nice horse emerge. So blame me, blame Mother Nature, blame Drevin, Drevin's front feet a little bit. But uh, don't blame his knees. They didn't do anything. I'm off to Sayota right now. Oh, I'll remind everybody again. Neptune, ton of messages. When are the shares of Neptune going up? Okay, you win. Everybody's been buying up the shares of the buckets, which I truly appreciate. So I'll make it as easy as I can. Sunday morning, 11 a.m., right at your Sunday brunch. If you're going out for brunch, that is when we will list the shares of Neptune. Now, I will tell everybody right now, their $440 American dollars landed at Northfield Park. So from now, I believe, I believe Robbie's going to feed the horse until he gets dropped off. From now until he lands in our barn the night of September the 18th or the morning of September 19th, the bill for him will be $440 US per share. That will encompass everything I'm told. Now, I'll triple check before Sunday, and if there's a mistake, I'll, I'll fix it, but I don't believe there is. It'll be $440 per share for Neptune. We are buying 60% of Neptune. Robbie Morris, the current owner and driver and trainer, is going to retain some. So is Daniel Cordina. His other horse is coming over also. We have two horses coming from Australia. This horse is a four-year-old Better's Delight from New Zealand, actually. I believe it's Neptune NZ or N. Um, so he'll be here on the 18th. So I will list, I'll remind everybody again, tonight on the way home if I can remember myself. Tomorrow, I'll remind everybody again, 11 a.m. on Sunday, I will ask Wendy to unlock and list all 60 shares that we are purchasing in Neptune on Sunday morning. He will land here. I have no idea how he'll acclimate. May be as simple as jogging him for a week, training him up, and away you go. Very likely is. But that'll be up to Neptune. So, that's the scoop for right now. As I said, I truly appreciate everybody scooping up all those buckets. Uh, I'm a little surprised that the one that has the most left is the, the most economical one. This isn't a, a lesser ability bucket. These are all just financial puzzles we're putting together when we get to the sale. So, I, I, I'm a little surprised that that's the one that's left, but hey, um, keep going and hopefully we can get them all sold out before we get to the sale because that would be a job well done by you and by me. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I'll talk to you all very soon. I'm off to the muddy, muddy track 
tonight known as Sayota. It will not be fun. I will finish very late. I will get home at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I will, if I possibly can, I will most definitely sleep in tomorrow. So with that, I'll talk to you soon. Hope you're having a great day, a great weekend. I hope it's sunny and not rainy wherever you are. Because the mud and the rain both suck.